Hello everyone, welcome to another ILM video. Welcome all kids, middle-aged men, teens, adults, and elderly, any and all, welcome to this video. Today, it's going to be very interesting because I'm going to look at a story that I made a few years ago. Because I want to look at the back at the past, I want to see how it impacted me to what you guys see me now, if that makes any sense. So, let's begin. But wait, I look so hideous right now. I don't want to be presenting this video in this form. I want to change. Voila! A new set of clothes and a new look. Now let's begin the video for real now. The one that follows him. By me. All written in Google Docs. Let's begin. We didn't want to kill him. We didn't want to But it wasn't him. He's a father. Waiting for the innocent. I'm a little confused with that. Why would someone force someone to kill them? Why would they want to die? They, they would just kill themselves by like, jumping off a bridge or something. This video is going to get age resisted. Chris was down on the floor. He was turning away from the stranger. The stranger was running after Chris. With a small life saying, Keep smiling, keep smiling, keep smiling. He caught up to Chris, and Chris had nowhere to run. This sounds like a fairly poor written creepypasta. Wait, was that all of chapter one? Was that it? Oh wait, false alarm, it's not. Chris was in his house, playing his PSP. His mother was working as an employee at a factory next to their house. And Chris's father worked for a company that could help Maine. It was for Chris's home. Every day, Chris is all alone in his house, with barely any food, water, with electricity. That's why every day, even on Saturday and Sunday, his parents have to work with no rest. And always have to go to home at 2 a.m. while Chris is sleeping. And every day they go to work at 5 a.m. still while Chris is sleeping. So Chris never gets to say goodbye or even see them. I should go for a walk, said Chris. He put on his shoes and went out the door. He went to well to his fellow neighbors. Or your parents, said Chris and neighbor Joe. Mm, always, said Chris sadly. Ah, uh, why don't you come in? We just finished cooking. Thanks, said Chris. While he went through the door, he noticed something unusual. There was a stranger walking through the neighborhood with a mask on his face. The mask looked like a happy brown bear with a smiling face. He was also wearing a black sweater with a hoodie on. Now back to walk, said Chris to himself. He walked for two straight hours. The weather wasn't good. The sun was coming down quick. He was about to go home to eat his supper, but, those, but then just as he was about to walk back home, the strange man again. I have several questions for this one. First off, of all places, Maine? What is this, a Stephen King movie? Secondly, why does a man have to have a bear mask? He's trying to hide his identity? And if so, of all things, why a bear? That makes you look like a weird person. Also, I love how the book doesn't describe what happens when he goes into Joe's place. He just says, sure, I'm gonna go into your house. And after that, he immediately says, now let's get back to walking. Like, what happened? Already this book is starting to get on my nerves. It sounds like a poorly written creepypasta. And this murderer, this thing with a bear mask, sounds like a very horrible poor man's chef to kill her. It just doesn't work. Nevertheless, we shall continue the story. He had a weird dream. Keep smiling, keep smiling, keep smiling, was all he heard in his sleep. Keep smiling, keep smiling, keep smiling. The voice grew louder as the sun rose. Keep smiling, keep smiling, keep smiling. Okay, now this is really starting to sound like Jeff the Killer now. Chris had just woke up. With still no parents. He was still wondering about the mysterious man, so he decided to get some information by using his computer. He opened Google and searched up, Who is the man with a bear mask? Interesting results popped up. One opened up the wiki. The wiki showed info about the man. Chris scoped and said it to the story. He was a murderer and killed innocent people because he was trying to find out who killed his mother. He was taken to an insane asylum. And five years later, he escaped still waiting for his next victim. When he was little, he was poor, just like Chris. He had a family and a sister named Jen. He went to school with his sister, but when he was always went, he was bullied. 
the bullies broke her arm and shaled them and threatened to bomb their house. What? What are they, terrorists? The principal suspended them for four weeks, but after the suspension, they continued again. But because this, the man decided to murder the bullies and put away the evidence. But that night, the man was crying because he found out that his mother died, and then he decided to get revenge and decided to murder the one who killed the mother. He went inside and that leads him to now. Chris was so disturbed that he found out that the man was in his neighborhood. He decided to spread the word throughout the neighborhood. He called the newspaper people about this. Chris said to himself. He called them and they agreed to put this in tomorrow's paper. Chris was glad he could spread the message, but still worried that the man would go after him next. So he decided just to wait and go to sleep. Tomorrow is another day. Okay, this murder is just awful. Why would the murderer just kill bullies just because they were making fun of him and stuff? And also, why did the bullies threaten the family that they would bomb their house? Like, that's insane! And God, his backstory of the murderer is just one of the mill cliche ever. Poor, have a family, they were bullied. Like, come on, man. Chris had read the paper. His news did came into the paper, but that was the least of his problems because he knew that people never saw this guy in the neighborhood. He decided to call 911 about the situation. 911, what's your emergency? I would like to make a complaint about a man, said Chris. Alright sir, we'll talk to you in a moment. Please be patient. Chris was on hold. He was waiting for somebody to come. Please tell the strange man yet again. This time, he was carrying a large bag with him, in the shape of a man. Chris thought that he murdered the man. Oh, come on! Just because there was a bat that was shaped like a human doesn't mean he killed the bat. All he stuck was stuff. Scared of his mind, Chris decides to run back to his home. Chris decides to just sleep, wipe his mind off about the man, and just think about this was all fake. But he still couldn't get over it. He had nightmares about the man, but then soon enough, he fell asleep. Tomorrow was another day. I have seen this man before. He hated us. He looked at us with disgust, but he tried to kill us. We didn't want to kill him. We didn't want to. But he forced us to. But he's still out there, waiting for an innocent. His demons are around us. He worships the evil. He's still killing the innocent. His deadly vengeance forever trapped us. What? What? What does that even mean? What does this even mean? Like, so what? He's having nightmares in the sleep, and he's hearing this thing in his mind? If this is where the nightmare is going, then he should really go to a therapist, because this is, he's taking this man way too seriously now. He decided to make one more final walk. It was 10 p.m. Chris was walking on a bridge with a knife on him, just in case if Chris sees the man again. He was right. This time, the man was dancing insanely. The strange man stopped and made eye contact with Chris. I know you, said the strange man. Then who am I, said Chris. You are the reason that I'm being chased after now. I'm sorry, but who wants a man killing children and adults, said Chris. Just wanted you to keep smiling, Chris. The strange stranger took the mask off. Why would you talk with the murderer? You should immediately call 911 or just run away from him. Oh my god said Chris while he was crying. Why would you want to kill all these people, Dad? Oh my god, the murderer is his father? Oh my god, what a plot twist! It's a cliche! I'm sorry. See, your mother died in the factory because of another crazy person, said Chris's dad. I wanted to get vengeance and was trying to find a person that killed her. I guess I was too far. That makes any sense. Chris and his dad were back together, but was saddened to find out his mother died. Chris's father was taken to court and sent him to execution. And Chris forever stayed in his house after witnessing his dad murdering people. You haven't witnessed him murdering people. Chris's neighbors are relieved to find out that the strange man is killed. They still don't know if it was Chris's father. Three years later, Chris graduated from high school and Chris said he wants to go walking in the night again. So he went back to walking, but in one night, Chris was smiling, waving at Chris. What do you want, Dad? yelled Chris. But wait, wasn't he killed? Why would you say that he was his dad? He didn't know it was another man. He also still didn't know that his father was executed. What? What? That doesn't even make any sense! Chris ran when the man chased after him. 
first was down on the floor. He was trying to run away from the stranger. The stranger was running after Chris with a small knife saying, Keep smiling, keep smiling, keep smiling. The stranger caught up to Chris, and Chris had nowhere to run. Chris was murdered. These people were not about his death. Joe was dead and that Chris was murdered. Now Chris's family was close to extinct. And Chris's sister is the only one left. Wait, what? Was that it? Is that all we're gonna have? Well, there you go, guys. The one that follows him. The greatest book of all time. What is, that didn't even make any sense. This book was just stupid for the sake of being stupid. To make this less confusing, let's divide this in sections on why I hate this book. Thunder, rain, lightning, danger, water rising. In one way or another, the contents in this book you will find familiar with. Like, the murderer is like a horrible version of Jeff the Killer. And also, the location where this event takes place is from like a Stephen King movie. Yes, I know, this was me back then and I didn't know any better. Like, come on, it's more funner to complain. All the characters in this book are like there just to be there. Like, Joe has nothing to do with the murder or anything. He's just there to be like a neighborhood. Just being like, hey, Chris, how you doing? All that stuff. Out of that, boom, he's gone. And Chris, he's an assumer. He's a scary cat. Once he sees at least something that has to do with the murder or anything, he just gets, becomes terrified, runs back to his house, and then has nightmares about it. I mean, come on. What do I mean by assuming? Well, when he saw that the murderer had a bag, he assumed that was the body in there. Like, what? I mean, I get it, it's a little bit concerning, but it could be anything in there. This book is just awful. While I can say that I'm never gonna make a book again, that thing was just horrible. Yes, I said thing. Unoriginal, poor characters, poor murderer, and yeah, oh, just a just a cliche. Thank you guys for watching. Comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.